Thank God for each and every one as we come before you in your presence. And Almighty God, we bless you richly. We thank you this hour. So if you haven't, say amen. Amen. Uh, it's reading as Matthew 21 and 28, starting there. But what think you? It says ye, but ye, ye. A certain man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not. But afterwards, he repented and he went. And he came to the second son and said, Likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir, and yet went not. Whether of them twine or two did the will of his father? As a question. Say unto him, the first, as they spoke in reply, Jesus said unto them, and verily, yes, Jesus said, verily I say unto you that the publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. Let us stop there, pause and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, while we're standing, we give you glory, honor, thank you for the word. Lord, I decrease, you increase. Lord, anything not like you, Lord, just remove it right now. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, we give us the mercy and grace, Lord, to get it right. We're living on this day, this is our time, but we're living in this hour, we're living in this moment. So, Lord, if we get it straight, we get it right, Lord, you said, receive us, you said, and you would not, would not cast us out. So we thank you for the word. We count these things done in Jesus' precious name. And let the church say amen. Amen. You may have your seat in the presence of the Lord. I have for a title today, if I can say to you, is that which you know, as if you have not heard, actions and words which cut deeper. Actions and words which cut deeper, church. Amen. We all have said things that we wish we could take back. We all have done things that we wish we had not done, and they manifested themselves from words to action. Amen. So it would go without saying that when you say which cuts deeper, you might be more inclined to ask that. Neither one of them is any better than the other. I think both of them could be equally matched. But in the scriptures where Matthew 21st chapter starting at the 28 was implying when Jesus was speaking to the Pharisees, the Pharisees said that whose authority do you do what you do, Jesus? According to me, you know Jesus. Jesus can always do a clap back. Jesus did a clap back, and he said to them, if you ask me yet one question, the John the Baptist, was he sent from what, heaven or from man? And then here comes the Pharisees within themselves saying to themselves, if we say from heaven, then we know that, that Jesus will say, well, why wouldn't you believe? But then from the world, because they knew that he was a prophet, and he had respect. In other words, John the Baptist had clout, did he not? Can Amen. I get a witness? Amen. Don't let me say it if it ain't true, no. Amen. But it's true. But Jesus, in all of what he said and going forward, what he said in the parable were two sons, and two sons, primarily one who said that I won't go. And the other said, I'll go, but didn't go. How many of y'all can relate to this? Amen. 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 You've been told to do certain things. You've been told to go to certain places. But you said no. Amen. But then you turn around and then you did what? You repented. Amen. You know, it reminded me of an episode of where sometimes when people come up with the sincerity in heart to do certain things, whereas they would want to come to Jesus. And they put it all out there on that very day. But then when they go away, they somehow tend to find themselves going back into that old Murray Clay, that old familiar place, mm -hmm. the sin and perdition, that place where they're familiar with. You 
you know, just like any one of us, we all know familiar places. Come on, man. Amen. We all know places that we got to get ourselves out of. And sometimes you think that it's just you alone that's helping or hindering, but you must understand that's when the time that you had to, amen, they say fight versus fight. You got to resist, amen, and humble yourself and resist the devil so that he will flee. But in respects to my lesson title of actions and words, which is cutting deeper, it may be in you the words that you've chosen. I've been a recipient and I've also been the one who also, amen, was the victimizer. Amen. I, amen. I was the one that said things, choice words that I wish I could take back. Amen. amen. Now, I'm not talking about when I was unsaved. I'm talking about when I was saved. Amen. Okay. Clarify that real quick, right? Amen. Because I recognize that even in myself, amen, I'm still a work in progress. Amen. Hallelujah. You're and right. we are all a work in progress. Amen. It is a day to day. It's a month to month. It's a week to week. It's an hour by hour. We are all in a state of processing. Amen. And look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. We don't know the time. We don't know the time. When God says, when God says he's coming. He's coming. Amen. But in a hurry. But we know that now, right now, the slate is clean. Come on. If we pray the prayer this morning, if we came here and said, Lord, forgive me. Yes. Lord, I ask you to forgive me and I got any or anything against anybody right now. I'm coming to you right now yes. to the altar yes. and ask you for forgiveness. Y'all remember that? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so when you leave here today, you're walking out with a clean slate. I need to remind Amen. somebody yeah. that. Because somebody might not understand that you got a clean slate today. Amen. You got a clean slate for what you did on yesterday. Amen. You got a clean slate what you did on Friday that last night. Amen. Um, you got a clean slate from the lies that you told and the things that you did. Amen. You got a clean slate right now. Amen. Don't you want to keep that clean slate? Yes. Don't you want to keep it from contamination and pollution? Amen. Yes. Amen. I do too. But Lord knows that Paul said it best. That which I do, I would not. But that which I would not do, that I allow it. For yet there's what in me. How does this, that, 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 that's, that's the thing that's in me, y'all. That flesh, that flesh, they said, let flesh be crucified. And that's why sometimes you might not need just to anoint your head. You might have to anoint your belly. Come on, amen. Because that's where the belly, the belly is where everything rises up. Amen. amen. You might not feel it in your belly, but it's coming oh, from yeah. the flesh. The flesh is coming from the belly. Amen. amen. That flesh is coming. Amen. Everything is running just like everything that you talk about your central core. And amen. And everything runs up into the brain. It comes back down and operates the hands. Amen. The feet in motion. Y'all been at a point where you go on, amen, and see the red light, amen, and your brain, amen, was on another planet, amen, and you went right through that red light. And lo and behold, you just thought, well, I don't know why I did that, but I did it. Just thank God that there was nobody coming that you would have on. But well, that's the point about where the brain has to operate into sync. Synchronization with the rest of us, amen. amen. But where I make this point is that sometimes, amen, we have through the Holy Spirit, amen, that now the regulator was the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost, amen, hallelujah, controls even brightest our tongue. Come on, amen. amen. Y'all knew this was coming. Amen. Sometimes the tongue, amen, amen, kindled a fire, a little fire, if you yeah. will. Amen. But all it takes is just a little bit of fire. Amen. And you've got a whirlwind of storm on your hand. And therefore in the mouth that they said life and death is in the power of the tongue. But that mouth, boy, will oh, have mercy. So may not be able to do it. Might have to have bleach. But where it is that we have to get it in control. We have to squash out. Because that right there is one of the greatest battles that most of us have. Is the controlling of that mouth. Amen. Come Amen. on. 
Most of the time, thy actions, amen, will not proceed, but the words that come out, the words is about where we say things, amen, and those things may be interpreted wrong. But my God, who is above us and all through us, he said, if I've given you my spirit, I'm giving you the choice words to say. Amen. Come on, because somebody said, well, I didn't mean to say that, but I said it anyway. But my God said he'll give us a temperance. Somebody say self-control. Amen. God said he'll give you self-control. Don't tell me God said don't you don't want me when I'm angry because you know I turn hawkish. But my God said he'll give us self-control. Fruit of the Spirit. Come on. Amen. That we have to fight the good fight of faith. Now you say, well, Lord, how do I get the amen a temperance? Well, some things are only by fasting and praying. Amen. You can't do it by watching a self-help video. You got to call on the Lord God Almighty. Amen. Amen. But in the parable, what God says is one would go, and the other said, I won't. Well, we already know that sometimes we are told to do the things that are uncomfortable, and we don't want to go. But guess what happens? Sometimes we recognize that even in those things that we resist, as we try to resist God's will, God's will, amen, brings us right back to him. Amen. You can go around the block, travel up two corners, and you'll be right back where you start. Y'all ever been there where you've been somewhere and you got lost, amen, and you came right back to where you was left, you said, my God, I'm lost. Hallelujah. Because you needed direction. Yeah. You needed direction. But you're still trying to find it. Somebody said, I'm trying to find it through my friends. I, I'm trying to teach, amen. I'm trying to ask them things about what their experience are. Y'all know sometimes friends can be helpful, amen. But that's on rare occasions. Uh, sometimes your friends, uh, are, uh, you may think all your friends are not your friends. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they plot and they may scheme and therefore they don't want to see you succeed. So don't use that word, amen, loosely. You don't get that word from me loosely unless you are my friend. I know some folks I've been friends with since, amen, I was in elementary school, amen. But those who are elementary school with me, they are my associates. They folks I can probably hang out or get along to get along. But I do not call them my friends. Amen. Amen. So be careful how you use the word friend. That's a powerful word for powerful people who have your back, but also when you wrong will tell you you are wrong. Oh my God. If you want somebody to tell you when you're right and you always right, then that is not your friend. They are scared of you, amen, or intimidated of you, but they are not your friends. As soon as you fall, they will scatter, amen, like roaches. Hallelujah. Can I get a witness? But as it implies and implies to the word of God, as the words and actions that we know today, actions have powerful weight, words have powerful weight, actions speak Volume. Somebody said, I love you. Hallelujah. Come on. Can I get a witness? Okay. Somebody said, I care about you. Come on. But your actions, uh -huh. uh, come on, you. speak volume. Yeah. Somebody says they love me with words. Uh -huh. But do you really love me? Do you love me enough to tell me who and what and what I've done? Do you love me enough? Amen. Amen. In spite of what I can do for you, can you do it and not want nothing in return. Can you love me enough and regardless of whether you see it or not, can you trust that yet we walk with God and God is in us? That's the question. Do you love God enough to love us? Do you love us enough that when you leave the house of worship that you ain't going to talk about me? Amen. In a second thought. That's not, not to say that you can't talk about me, because I enjoy you talking about me. Amen? Because you talk about me, you just give me up high. Hallelujah. You see, you think you're doing wrong. But all you doing is feeding the flame. Amen? Amen. Well, God will elevate me even more. Come on. Somebody say, I don't like him. I don't 
don't care for him too much. I, I've heard that before too, amen? But sometimes somebody need to understand, you got to have some haters. You got to have some folks that don't like you. Don't get upset about it. Don't get all tilly tally and all mighty and hotty about it. Because haters will make you. Haters can try to break you, but they don't know your end. And though the hate hate, God said, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I'm going to tell you today. Does anybody, I don't know why God got hated on, the, but yeah. some folks that hate on you and don't even know nothing about come you. On, on. Some folks that even hear what somebody else said about you and run with it and then talk about, well, I heard they was so-and-so. I heard they was my great yeah. here. They ain't from Danville. Well, uh, this and that. But I do not care if you're preaching God's word. Yeah. If you're living for Jesus, you are, amen, a fellow laborer. I can't put a fellow labor down. Some folks talk about the bro code, but that's the Christian code. We ain't supposed to put each other down, but lift each other up. Because somebody might be praying against you. And my God, if they do, you don't want everybody to tear you down. Because psychologically, people talking about you after a while can't weigh on your spirit. I know it was so forth with Jesus, but my God, Jesus in Gethsemane, but God, he saw what was getting ready to happen, and he saw what they had bought it for, even for 30 shekels of silver that Judas even betrayed Jesus, but he said, Lord, bid this cup to pass, but not my will, but thy will be done. Sometimes we get in a place of adversaries, and we got to stand our ground. Sometimes we get in a place where they talk about you so much that there's already a perception in the room. But glory to God, God says, stand your ground. Because God's got a way that's mighty sweet that he'll make your enemies your footstool. Hallelujah. He'll make wrong right and right the wrong. Hallelujah. Oh my God. But just wait and see. Sometimes we feel like we got to get that last mail word in. But I want you to understand when you're quiet and peaceful, that's when you look scary. That's when people might say, oh boy, you better not cross that line. But my God, because that's a praying sister or brother. Because, amen, because when sometimes you see a person that they're quiet, you don't know what's going on in their head. You don't know what's turning on and what's turning off. Amen. Some people, amen, when they turn off, they go black. Hallelujah. They might not be capable of knowing what they've done after the fact. Those are some scary folks. You don't think I'm talking good, but I'm talking serious. Amen. I talk to young folks. Talk about they got in a fight. They went black. Amen. Don't remember nothing that happened after the fact. That's a demon. Come on. Amen. Come on. Let me talk real, y'all. Hallelujah. But uh, I'm here to let you know today those actions that we sometimes, as the Bible said, as a man thinking in his heart, so shall he be. Hallelujah. If you speak to yourself, I heard this was said by one who was a martial arts master. Amen. Kung Fu. Amen. Bruce Lee. He said the words about how with your mind, amen, when you start saying, I'll never be nothing. I'm nothing at all. Then see, your mind can't distinguish the difference. You might have been talking about somebody else, but you about to even learn how to speak over yourself. Good things, not bad things. You have to learn how to say that I am an overachiever. I am a conqueror. I am able to do this work. I am able to get A's and B's in school. Because you psychologically, amen, convince your mind. Because it's a process in your head, amen, that tells you things. Huh, man? You can tell me, I can go out here and tell somebody, I'm going to get this car, I'm going to get this house. Amen, I'm going to get this man, I'm going to get this woman. But I can't speak to myself, amen to improve my health. Come on, somebody. I ran with the word of God. He says, amen. Many afflictions of the righteous, but God shall have lived them out of the heart. Hallelujah. The God is the God that we serve. Amen. amen. The God of the right now, the here and now. Amen. amen. The God that allows us to open up our mouths and speak out of our mouth with words of blessings and yet not cursings. 
Amen. To be the top and not the bottom. To be the head, not the tail. To be the first and yet not the last. But that don't mean you're supposed to bust up in line in front of somebody, amen, and cut them off. That don't mean you're supposed to get in traffic, amen, just to move a millimeter, amen, in front of them and the light is still red. But my God, it is so amazing to know that as actions versus words, as those who move hand in hand, and therefore we talk about words, how many of you could just take back what you said? Amen. Oh my God. If I can reverse the hands of time. But in impulse, in our rage, yes, I say rage, or in our, amen, impulsive, compulsive way, we say things, we do things, and then you start to know that the enemy is like, aha, see that, thought you would say, thought you would hold it. But then, as you know, there's a clean slate today, praise the Lord, church. And that clean slate says that, glory to God, I looked in the mirror. I looked at myself. And I like myself. But I'm going to tell you right now. I got a clean slate. So if you got a clean slate, you not only have a clean slate about what you said and about your actions. Because the actions sometimes are the things that are in our past. The things that we've grown up and how we grew up and all the things that people done to us and did to us. But my God, now it's time for us to walk in newness of life. Amen. For God says you are a new creature created in his good works that you might walk therein. Somebody tell me I can't get over what happened to me when I was a child. But I'm here to let you know if you're thinking yourself still as a child. You'll never mature to a adult, though you can get on the meat instead of being on milk. Because right now, some folks like us need to get off milk and get on some meat. We're still trying to get on the milk. We're still trying to do the things that don't please God. But it's time for them to get off the milk and get educated. Hallelujah. Come up with wisdom. God said, get wisdom. Come on, get knowledge. But I'm about to get an understanding. And don't tell me you can't get no elephant talk. Because God said his words are not your words. And God says that he can give you the words to speak. Come on, Moses was a man who was stumbling in his words. But he went up to Pharaoh and talked to Pharaoh like he had good sense. And I don't believe he was stuttering either. But I believe he knew how to talk. Because God was giving him wisdom. And the Bible says let a man ask for wisdom. Now, God won't grind it. God won't take it back. In other words, God said he'll give it to you liberally if you ask for it. Now, somebody needs wisdom to learn how to stay away out of trouble. Oh, have you ever been there where you've been in trouble? Have you ever been in the midst of folks that you know are no good? They family sometimes. They friends that you call friends sometimes. And they be holding up. They ain't got you caught up in their mess. Oh, I can tell you some stories right now. Now, if it was the devil's way, I've been a drug dealer. If it was the devil's way, I've been dead right now. But if it was the enemy's way, hallelujah, I'd probably be in prison right now. Come on, somebody. But I'm telling you today, you might think it's slight, but there are young people right now. Amen. That every one of them right now is one prayer away. Amen. From going to the jailhouse. One prayer away from going to the grave. One prayer away. Hallelujah. From killing or being killed. One prayer away. My God. But my people's words have weight. My people who are called by my name. Who humble themselves to pray with words. If they pray with the words of power and authority, you won't have to worry about no more. The burdensome of one hour won't be nothing to you. Praying for two hours will be just your normal. Come on here, somebody. Because God said, I give to you my spirit. And I pour out my spirit upon all flesh. That the handmaids and hand servants, yet she visions and dreams and they shall prophesy. But glory to God, somebody tell me, you say you got the Holy Ghost and yet you still ain't coming up. You say you got the Holy Ghost and yet you still can't do this and do that. But my God, somebody lying, church. Somebody ain't telling the truth. But my God said in this word, every good, every perfect gift that comes from above 
it comes from God and without shadow of eternity and without variableness, uh, that means that God ain't going to give you, give it. Uh, God said if you ask, you shall receive. He said if you seek, you shall find. He said if you're not, the door shall be open. How many want blessings on your life? But you got to learn how to speak it over yourself. How many want to be healed right now? But you got to learn how to say, I'm healed right now. Somebody said, my mind, hey man, my body's healed, but my mind ain't healed. Somebody said, I need my mind to get healed, Lord. But then I said to you, speak it out. Speak it out right now. Speak it out in the name of Jesus. Speak it out right now. Somebody said, I want a bow ass. But before you get your bow ass, hallelujah, you better seek the righteousness of God. Because a bow ass will turn out to be an Ahab. Hallelujah. And you don't have the wisdom to know the difference. But that what's wrong with some of the young folks. Hallelujah. Right now, you looking with your naked eye. But you got to open your spiritual eye. Because when God gives you that one day, it's a small day. But the first thing you see popping up that's distinct about that person, I'm going to tell you the truth. That's the one day you better run from it. Because it's going to show the ugly. It's going to show you that what they made up. Hallelujah. Because if they amen the right, hallelujah, if they're self centered if they're narcissistic, it's coming out, church. But then the one that repented said, I ain't going. 
And that probably lines up with more of myself, I would say, because at first I said, I don't know, I don't know, I don't want to go, I don't want to go, God, I don't want to do this, I don't want to do none of this. I come to church, I do what I have to do, I pay my tithes and all, amen. I ain't that, I'll bless you, I'll pray, I love the dance, amen. Church and dancing go hand in hand while I'm concerned. But that ain't me. But I don't want to be up in that pulpit. Anybody say they run up here like that? Something wrong with it. Do you really know if you really call me? Because you got to take some things. Yeah. The trials, the tribulation, the actions of other people that didn't have nothing to do with what you did wrong, but everything they do wrong, and you got to bear the brunt of it. Oh, yeah. Because if they saw them doing the wrong, oh, oh. then they said, I thought they went over there to STOC. But that's how it goes. That's how it goes, sir. People are waiting in the crevices and darkness to just see that you and I and the people around us who claim to be what we are, amen, are caught up. But oh, I want you to go. There's hope today. Because regardless of whether those folks who try to catch you, like when the devil uses them, say, aha uh -huh, moment, I want you to understand the Bible said, be bold. And come to the throne of grace and ask forgiveness. Because why? Because amen. The devil, all the devil wants you to do is for you to not go. All the devil wants you to do is to not have enough of Jesus in you so that you won't repent and then turn around. But God says, repent, turn around. I don't care how many times. Well, he did say 70 times 70 for some folks. And I believe some folks are going into the 980 times. Amen. But nonetheless, my God, you do it as many times and know that you got the day to live that God's grace is giving you to turn it around. You turn it around. All right. All right. And you turn it around today. Yeah. And you walk with God. Yeah. Call to God. Let God worry about tomorrow. You worry about today. Get your heart right. Get your mind right. Come on. Amen. It's God good today, church. Yes. Uh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. hallelujah. And see, I could go into some levels of why words and actions mean so much. Because see, you know, I had a thought the other day. That's just going to blow your mind. I'm going to blow your mind just like that. Do you know that I was in the shower and I was mentally thinking about a song. And I didn't hear no music, just a shower going. I come outside. And guess what was playing on the television? That, song. that same song. How many of y'all been there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now I ain't gonna tell you it was a Christian song either. Cause it won't. Well, it's all right. Sometimes. But I didn't have no knowledge of why I went there with that song. And therefore, when I walked outside, there was on television. And I said, the power of the mind. Subconscious mind, programmable mind, to put even words from songs so embedded in your psyche, you don't even know it comes to surface until something over there yonder, amen, promotes it or amen, props it up. And it's like it connect and you start you singing it in the shower, not even knowing this up there on your television where you can't even hear. And that blew my mind. That blew my mind, church. But imagine the thought that God says to you and I, as every word is proceeding out of your mouth, you have the ability to speak life and yet not death. That's right. You can speak to everything and everyone that you know you come in contact. He said, yet pray for your enemies. Bless those that curse you. Right. Come on, you want them. I know you want them to do it so bad. I know sometimes you know your enemy didn't say some, some slight mess and some shady, did some shady stuff, but you ready to just, just you think that the power is in your words and, and, and to, to use profane words. But no, the power is in the prayer. Yeah, that's right. Because see, somehow God turns the enemy around and makes them your footstool. Yes, sir. And they got to come back and repent. They might have had to turn around and bless you. That's right. Hallelujah. Yeah. Didn't he do it in Egypt? 
Did he do it with Pharaoh? Yeah, yeah. Did he do it, church? He did. They left out. They was, when it was there, they didn't have much. But when they left out, they had silver, gold, fine linen, silk from all foreign parts of the world. And you telling me what I'll always tell folks? If you don't want to believe it, don't believe it, but I believe it. The Bible says that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. And I don't care what nobody say. I ain't got to get invested in Bitcoins. Amen. I know it's amen opportunity. I don't have to go out here and put a stock market. Amen, somebody. But I'm still my knees get met. Yeah. And I ain't knocking those that do. Amen. That's their cup of tea. But you got to know your limits. You got to know where your concentration. I can go chasing a pipe train. I can be a millionaire times over chasing the dream, chasing the pipe train. Some folks, they don't even chase nothing. They don't want to chase nothing. But I'm chasing Christ. Yeah. The song right there, I'm chasing that. Yeah. No matter what I have to do. Because I need you I more and more. Some of y'all ain't even started chasing yet. Amen. Y'all just crawling. Uh, y'all on the ground right now. Y'all like the, the walking dead. Amen. When you see them, half the body's gone and the rest of them just moving slow and trying to get over. You just barely getting along. But my God, God said, take up that bed and walk. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, it's good today, church. Let's, let's I say I'm going to conclude my message for today. 1 Corinthians through chapter 10, amen, it starts off, and I want to say why this matters, because when you talk about actions and words, kingdoms are based on people having a vision. When a man or woman says that they have a vision for themselves, that means they write out, and they put it on paper. How many of y'all who know what I say that in this church, that I say, if you want to talk to me about something, write it out. That's right. Why? Because when you've got a vision to write things out, that what's in your mind becomes manifested. Yes, sir. See, until you understand that concept to write out your vision for yourself, if you want what you want, regardless, I'm not going to judge you. But when you want what you want, amen, I'm not talking about want somebody else's stuff, I'm talking about what you need, amen. But then are you willing to put in the work? Right. Are you willing to do the sacrifice? Are you willing to do the extra mile that it takes? Because if not, you're lazy and you are lazy and you won't get it. But you can't get mad at your sister or brother if they got it and you don't. But I am so humble about my God that I know God said he'll show you if you just ask. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. And if you ask, you shall receive. And if you seek, guess what, church? You gonna what? You gonna find it. Yes. Corinthians third chapter, tenth verse, Amen. Reads says this: According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation. Of course, y'all know Paul speaking, but and another building thereon. Somebody's building off a foundation that's already been laid. Come on, y'all follow me? Yeah. But let every man take heed how yet he build it thereupon. And it says in 11, For other foundation can no man lay that is laid, which is what? In Jesus Christ. So whatever you're doing, if Jesus ain't the head of it, then you might want to get out of it. Yeah. Amen? Somebody said, I wanted, like I told you, I wanted to join a, a motorcycle club because I thought it was noble. But I've got to tell you something. I can't be committed 100% to a cause that's got more worthiness than Jesus Christ. All right. All right. Say it again. I, ain't, I mean, good works are good works, but you can do all the good works in the world, but it ain't going to get you to heaven. All, right. all these folks that's out there in the world is part of these groups of frats and fraternity, sororities and all these things, have at it. That's right. But on the day when you recognize that your heart is not into God 100, you understand why. And if you don't understand why, come see me. Email me because I'm here. But here's the thing. Verse 13. Every man's work come on, say, every man's work, every man's work shall be made manifest for the day Shall declare, shall declare it, it because, because it shall be revealed by fire. It shall be revealed by fire. And you can stop. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. In other words, trial, tribulations, 
setback, comebacks, fall out, fall in. We all go through them. Business owners, amen. Job-related stresses, huh? Come on, family, elderly, all the things of life that all that make us what we are. But oh, I love what Bishop Campbell, Apostle Campbell said. He said, "Don't let life make you bitter, make you what better." See, I can't rather, I can, I can't, I can't register a lot of things that happened to my past and keep moving forward. Because if I don't let them go, and if I don't move, they will forever bound me, and I'm not set free. And that's why I can tell you about my story in a book. I can tell you if you want to know one-on-one -on -one about my struggle and about what happened to me at a very young age. But I can tell you that it could have turned me out. I can tell you it could have took me to the other side, but it didn't. But it still made me messed up, perverted. It still made me out there and put me out there. But I'm telling y'all, amen, the whole point is, there's a lot of things that have been and have been in our lives. But where do we say lay aside every weight, yes, sir. every sin, yeah. that's so what? Easily beset us. And come on and what? Run the race. Yes, sir. What is that? Because I be God knows that everything that I can say, I can say, I can blame on my dad. I can blame on my mom. You want strong enough. You want this enough. But I want you to understand. Nobody's going to stand before God and be judged but you. That's right. Amen. And Glory you alone. Glory to Not your pastor. Not your minister. Not your mom. Not your deacon or deaconess. Not your elder. Not your prophet or prophetess. But you. And God said that day shall come. And therefore, it will come soon. May God bless you. Bless you. Before I close out, I want you to pause for a minute to pray. To pray for those in need who are listening on Facebook. I took the time, me and Pastor, and we went out to the river. And y'all, it's peaceful. I tell you, it's like going to the ocean. But I find myself tearing up because I never really made sense of how the river waters make a, a sound so profound that it has its own voice. But just like the rivers, the Bible says that I shall pour to you living waters. Yeah. I thought about the living waters of God. So when God pours his spirit upon you, the living waters, Y'all can't be without no more. Because you've already heard. You can't be void of understanding because you have it, because you did not ask it. But you must know this. Out of your abundance of words will therefore be your actions. And out of your actions shall be also your words. So Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you today. We bless you in the name of Jesus. Every heart and mind. Today, we got a clean slate on. We got a clean mind and a right mind to do abundantly above what can be asked and think. We know, God, that you said in your word, O oh God, that him who asks shall receive. Him who seeks, they shall find it. Knock and the door shall be open. We claim the healing, God. We claim the deliverance, Lord. Healing of those things right now. Whether lupus or arthritis, osteoarthritis, Lord God. Leukemia, Lord God. Cancerous. Amen. But malignant or amen or benign we claim healing right now in the name of Jesus Must if it's metastasized in the name of Jesus we bind it oh God you say in the word oh God whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven whatever is loosed on earth is loosed in heaven so right now in the name of Jesus we bind the works of the enemy we yet loose oh God the healing power and virtue even right now somebody even right now wants to know what it's like to be a mother. Somebody wants to know what it's like, amen, to birth. But my God, let them birth first the Holy Ghost. Let them birth 
first, oh God, the mind that you have given to us that we might walk in newness. Somebody wants to be, amen, hallelujah, turned around. They want to be able to be literate. They want to be literate, Lord, not illiterate, but literate. And God, I pray even right now for them. God, you said this, let them ask for wisdom. You said, Lord, let them ask that you shall give it to them. Just begin to ask and God shall do the rest. We know, God, that somebody somewhere, a little child is sitting in prison. Somewhere, somewhere, somebody's father, mother, sister, brother, nephew, niece, or what have you. But God, I'm asking you right now, those states right now, those lawyers, those uh, prosecutors, Lord, they may have been corrupt, but God, I know that you can make a way. Hey, God, get the glory out of their lives. I'm praying for the young man, the young woman on the streets right now, the drug addicts, oh, Lord, and God, the prostitutes right now, they need our prayers. They're people, they're human beings. Oh, God, they're souls just like we were souls, and we are still, amen, have not arrived, but we pray for them. We pray for mothers, oh God. We pray for the mothers that keep the homes together, yes. for the single mothers, yes. for the single fathers, for the ones right now who was mother and father in household, barely scraping enough to get the food on the table. Yes. But God, somehow you made a way. But oh, it's going to pay off in the end. That son, that daughter, they're going to make it so that that young, that grandmother or that father or that mother won't have to work or won't for nothing no more. Hallelujah. So we thank you, God, right now for doing your will in their lives. Even in the church of spirit and truth, God. So some entrepreneurship right now. Yeah. We got some things going on. We got some people, God, that you're going to bless right now. But glory to God, they got to see themselves before it manifested. They got to see themselves being what you said created them to be. That they created in good works that they may walk therein. We've been predestined for them things. But God, they must know the pathway. So Lord, I'm asking you to ask them, what's your pathway? Oh God, touch them right now. Touch us right now. Touch your preachers. Touch your leaders. Touch your anointed. Touch those the fathers. Touch the strangers. Touch the priests and the prophets, oh God. Touch them today in the name of Jesus. Touch those right now, God. Some but scandalous situations in the church houses. Oh God, we ask you to touch them right now. Do it right now, Lord. Say the word, Lord oh God. But Lord oh God. Let the preacher know that, Lord of God, that he's not far gone. Yeah. Let them know that they're not so far gone that you cannot say, no yet yeah. or restore restoration right now in the name of Jesus. So right now, we count it done. We give you the honor and glory in Jesus' name. Let the church say amen. 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 God bless you.